Good afternoon, all. Mike Logan. Uh, Got to check my hair in the mirror. Uh, from AskMikeTheCounselor2.com. Uh, it's a beautiful late August Saturday afternoon in Rockford. We've had some rain the last few days, but today what I want to talk to you about is a brand new page that I put up on my website called Relationship Coaching. You know, it's interesting to me that as I build my website on counseling, counseling techniques and tools and discoveries and recommendations, what I'm finding is, is that there is a growing demand for and uh, a growing number of providers of coaches in various and different, various and sundry fields. Now, coaching is a little bit different than psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, there is, uh, of course, a diagnosis and uh, there is a pathology and uh, coaching is a little different in that you work with your strengths, which I really like, but it's... Uh, it's a little uh, expensive. Okay, that's beside the point. Uh, another, what I mean is, is that insurance doesn't cover coaching, so it doesn't have to be hugely expensive. But relationship coaches, um, what I like about the idea of relationship coaching is, is that you can, you can utilize a number of different tools to help you prepare for connecting in relationship. And one of the ones that I'm really fascinated by these days is chemistry.com by Helen Fisher. Helen Fisher is, is an anthropologist at Rutgers, PhD, who's done some work on uh, looking at brains that are in love and uh, immature relationships and falling out of love. And she has determined that uh, the process of love, which is uh, a big part and parcel of relationships, most relationships, um, is involves reward centers deep in the brain. She says it's a drive, like an appetite. It's not an emotion, and it's uh, and it can be a little more predictable than it uh, already is. So her, she's put up something called chemistry.com, which you can go to on my website. There are a number of pages with links, and you can take a personality profile, and you can find somebody out there in the world who has the same kind of chemistry. You know, athletic teams are always talking about how chemistry plays such a large part in winning championships well now relationships have chemistry and John Gottman and Julie Sch Schwartz Gottman who are part of the well they are the Gottman team say that the masters of marriage they've been studying marriage for 30 years the masters of marriage are the couples that can repair arguments pretty quickly M imagine that okay they come back to the table and they talk about it. Maybe they process it a little bit. Or if one got a little contemptuous, that particular one partner would say, um, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm sorry for being contemptuous about your restaurant suggestion. Those are the folks who have long and deep and rich and successful relationships. Those people who can repair and nurture positive, positive, positive emotions. emotions. The one thing that the coaches don't say anything about that I think is important is that you've got to do that a lot. For example, my cell phone just went off and I was struggling with, uh, you may have heard it, struggling with what to attend to, continuing with this little video, I'm running out of time and got to get it loaded up and edited and done, or answering the phone. When that kind of thing happens in our lives, typically we respond with some anger or some fear, we're distracted, we don't know what to do. And when that happens in a relationship and there are children running around, it is a recipe for conflict. Okay, so how do I nurture positive emotions when there's a whole bunch of noise in the environment? Well, I've got to focus in here. And heart math is a great tool to do that. Heart math allows me to uh, establish a coherent heart rate. In other words, the time between heartbeats happens, is very consistent, and I feel good. Even with lots of noise coming in. I can still feel good inside. Once I train my heart to beat coherently, my heart has a nervous system all of its own. Uh, it actually regulates its own heartbeat. This brain doesn't regulate the heart rate. That's interesting, isn't it? And the heart sends a huge amount of emotional data up, much more than the brain sends to the heart. So if I get my heart very coherent, it opens up the higher perceptual centers in the brain, and I can nurture positive emotions anytime I want on any given heartbeat. And I can hold that for significant periods of time. So I am doing what the Gottman's say, nurturing positive emotion, 
Of course, I picked my partner utilizing chemistry.com. Nothing left to do but enjoy. Mike Logan, AskMikeTheCounselor2.com, Relationship Coaching in Rockford, Illinois, August 21st. Thank you.